Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Calvary United Methodist Church here in Annapolis, Maryland. As we each prepare our hearts and minds for worship, as we listen to the faithful music of the handbell. God's people say. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace to you and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I'm Pastor Linda Motter, blessed to be the appointed pastor here at Calvary United Methodist Church in Annapolis, Maryland. I want you to know that I've been praying for all who are going to be a part of this worship service today. Did you know that God knows what we need? And God provides that in all kinds of ways. And so my prayer today has been, whether it's through the beautiful music we just heard, Hosanna, loud Hosanna, whether it's in the prayers prayed, the scriptures read, the word proclaimed, the anthem sung, that we feel God touching our heart within this service this day in just the way we need it most. Friends, that's what I mean about when I say let's get out of the way and allow God to lead us and to guide us. Let's make that our center focus within this worship service today. This is an especial worship service where we center on the Lord is my shepherd. So it is fitting this day, whether it's our first time or whether we've been here countless times, that we center ourselves with a much-loved scripture along this line. Of course, I'm referring to Psalm 23, verse 1. Let us join together in this invocation verse. 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. Please stand as you are able in body and spirit for the call to worship. Day by day, God leads us to the deep, deep pools of peace, to the green, lush lawns of our grace. Day by day, Jesus calls us to pour out ourselves in service, to anoint the stranger with hope. Day by day, the Holy Spirit shows us the community we could be and the family we are called to become. Let us worship God.
please remain standing as we say the morning prayer. Loving and gracious God, we are your people, the sheep of your pasture, the flock you have gathered. Lead us beside still waters, teach us the way of righteousness, and feed us at your table. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. So my name is Joe Greider, and I'm the youth director here at Calvary United Methodist Church. And I want to welcome everyone who's joining us, whether you're here online or online or here in person. Um, I'm glad that uh, you could be with us today to worship. So um, there should be a bulletin. If you're here in person, you got to hand it to you. There's a larger sheet. If you're online, it's available um, with the email and, on, and at our website. Um, but it's the announcements of what's going on here at Calvary in the near future. Um, there's a lot of things on there, but I would like to highlight a few kind of coming up. One of them is a reminder that after service, we do Fill My Cup Cafe in the parlor. If you're interested at all in, in helping with that, there is a, a sign up. You can talk to Julie or because uh, we like it, there are some QR codes you can use. Um, just like the QR codes that you use to sign up, they'll let us know that you joined us here at worship today. Um, the other thing I'll point out is that next Saturday is our final cookie factory of the year. For those of you who don't know, it's intergenerational. We're making about uh, 500 dozen cookies. Uh, it's a fundraiser for our youth, but it's also a chance to outreach and show the midshipmen here at the Naval Academy that the people around us um, and the community here still appreciate them and, and remember who they are. As a recipient, that means a lot to them. And I know uh, to, uh, if you're interested in that worship opportunity or that mission opportunity, please let me know or show up at about 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. Um, follow your nose to the cookie smell and you'll be able to find us. Um, afterwards, we're doing a reunion at about 4 o'clock, 4.30 um, for anyone's potluck. If you've ever done anything with Cookie Factory, we would love to have you come back, kind of get some old faces and, and new faces and talk about stories of that worship together since that's 42 years old so if you're interested in that um, please either show up or once again reach out to uh, Jane Francis or myself if you're interested next Sunday we have a new member class um, and then we'll be welcoming new members so if you're interested to find out more about becoming a member here at Calvary if you aren't already even though you worship with us we would love to have you be a member of that so um, the class is 845 in the parlor um, if you're interested and can't make that class, please let us know because there's other, uh, other things we can talk about and opportunities because we would like to have you as a part of a member here at Calvary with our work, during our worship. So with that, I would like to uh, call up Bill Loveless for another mission opportunity here at Calvary. Howdy. Howdy. Yeah, it's me again. In just under two weeks, we plan to prepare 20,000 meals for people in need. However, before I get to that, if we do this, we will have prepared over 120,000 meals over the last six years for people who may not know where their next meal is coming from. But the problem is, I have only 65 people signed up. We cannot do 20,000 meals with 65 people. We need at least 100. So we need you. It will only take about two hours of your time to do this if you don't have two hours, we'll take whatever time you can spare, but we do need you and we need your help. You can sign up very easily, scan the QR code in the bulletin announcements this morning. There is an online email, email um, the e-news, e-news that is sent out every week. There's a link in there for signing up. There are also QR QR codes on the table and the foyer you can use, or you can use the pen and paper 
that's in the foyer to sign up. Either way you do it, we really need you. So thank you. And God bless you all real good. I'd like to um, invite the children up for a moment. Oh, sorry. And while they're coming up, I just wanted to remind you all that we do have a staffed nursery for children up to five upstairs in room 15, 215, 215. And if you don't know how to get there, I'm sure one of the ushers would be more than happy to show you how to get there. Come on up. Good morning, everybody. Oh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay, that's a little bit better. Good morning, Charlotte. A long time ago, way before you guys were born, there was a show on TV called Who Do You Trust? Anybody remember that TV show? Or I'm, I'm, wow, okay. Anyway, we're gonna play that today. And how that game works is I'm going to look at somebody and ask them a question. Don't get nervous. It's not like a school question. It's kind of an easy question. And you're going to look at somebody, and you're going to point to them. And between the two of you, you guys are going to try to come up with the answer. Does that make sense? Yes? OK. Charlotte, pick somebody that you trust that's going to help you be able to answer the question. Maggie? Okay, so here's the question. The first question is a sports question. Are you good with sports? I should have asked you, right? You're good at sports? Um, so the first question is, and you two can, can talk it over if you don't know the answer to it. What is the name of the football team from Baltimore? Wait, just we're gonna let them answer first. You guys will get a chance. Do you think you know it without consulting Maggie? Okay, what is it? The Baltimore Ravens, okay. That is, that's a baseball team. Oh, you know what? That was, I think I said football team, did I? Yeah, you did. Ooh, okay, but you're right. Orioles are the baseball team. Um, so should we do another sports question, Nolan? Okay, pick your partner who can help you. Your brother, that's a safe bet, right? Okay, here's another sports question. So a local team from Washington, D.C. is going to be in the NHL hockey playoffs starting this afternoon. What team is that? So it's from Washington. They play hockey on the ice. Their colors are red, white, and blue. One of their players is Alex Ovechkin. <laughs> you think you know? Yes, the Caps, good job. Okay, the next question is a Bible question. You wanna do it, Royce? Okay, pick somebody you think can help you if you don't know it or you can work together. It's not, just pick somebody, it's not a, not a big thing. Oh, Charlotte, okay. All right, so here's the Bible question. In the Old Testament, there was a man who took two of every animal on a big boat called an ark. Who was that? Hmm. Well, you remember you have a partner. You want to ask your partner if she can help you? Got it. That's great. See, you work together as a team and you got it. So just like you guys trusted the people to help you answer the question, in life we need to find people we can trust too, right? So the scripture today, as we've heard, is called The Lord is My Shepherd. And uh, David wrote the psalm, The Lord is My Shepherd, and David was a shepherd. Do you guys know what shepherds do? What, is, what do they do, Mason? They take care of sheep, and when they take care of them, what does he mean? Like if they get hungry, what would a shepherd do? Feed them or take them to a place where they could get grass, right? What if they're thirsty? What would a shepherd do? They take them by water where they could drink, 
water. And what if they were, if something was trying to injure them or attack them, another animal? What would they do then? What would the shepherds do? Hmm? He'd help protect them, right? So they wouldn't get hurt. So that we don't have to search around for somebody to trust. We know in our lives, because we come to Bible school and Sunday school and church, we know who we can trust, right? Who can we all trust? God, Jesus, right? We don't even have to ask questions. We know that he'll protect us and he'll provide for us and he'll send people around to keep us safe. So we don't have to worry about anything when we put our trust in Jesus, just like you guys put your trust in your partner when you were answering questions. Okay? Make sense? Good, I'm glad. All right, let's pray before we go to Sunday school, okay? I'll say a couple words and then you say it back. Make sense? Okay, dear God, thank you for sending us a shepherd in Jesus. We know that he takes care of all of our needs and loves us so much. In your name we pray. Amen.
please stand as you are able in body and spirit. Today's reading is from the book of Psalms, chapter 23, the Old Testament reading, the New Living Translation. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside beautiful, peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of mine enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. And the King James Version says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, you remember. Alleluia. Jesus, the Christ's death and resurrection, that's the centerpiece of our faith, is it not? If we call ourselves followers of Jesus. And we know that Easter is not just a day, but it's a season, is it not? That's why the church worship calendar devotes seven weeks. That translates into 50 days of an Easter season. It will end this year on May 19th, which is when we will celebrate Pentecost, the birthday of the church. And do you know what we're also celebrating this year? Again, our youth will be confirmed. Thanks be to God. So what does it mean to be a community shaped by the dying and raising of Jesus the Christ? Well, that's what we're exploring in this Power of Belonging worship series, all during these 50 days of the Easter season. Some people ask me, Pastor, why is that big, tall candle in here? Have you ever wondered that? The official name for it is the Paschal Candle, it represents Jesus. And so during the 50 days of Easter, the Paschal candle is a part of all worship services, all of them. And that's why you see it during this Easter season, if you've ever wondered. And so today you heard, we heard very familiar Bible verses. Yes, ones we usually hear after someone has passed, after a loved one has passed into their eternal glory. Today, I want us to consider another perspective with these verses, that these verses, Psalm 23, remind us that in Jesus Christ, we all belong. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of every heart, Lord, in this worship be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock, and yes, our blessed Redeemer. Amen. Have you ever considered or thought what current medical diagnoses and prescriptions reveal? If you could see all of them together, just in in one big swath. Well, that on any given day, 
about 25% of people are struggling with depression, be it situational, seasonal, or chronic, and or anxiety. That's one in four persons. And this does not include those who struggle with depression and anxiety and are undiagnosed. So the number is really larger. One in four, that's a lot of people. That could include me. That could include you. Mental health experts have called it an epidemic for a while. And remember, during COVID, the numbers only went up. That did not help. And studies show that, did you know this? Persons who were born in the last five decades are up to 10 times more likely to deal with depression and anxiety than those born in the 1930s, 1940s, or 1950s. Isn't that amazing in itself? It's an accepted fact that all human beings have primary needs, we all do, for food, for water, for shelter. And after those primary needs are met, all humans have commonly shared emotional and physical needs. These needs need to be met for humans to thrive and enjoy life. Without exception, people who are depressed and are anxious are not getting those needs met. Now, I find it interesting that traditional communities naturally meet basic emotional support needs of their members. For example, in the traditional Amish society, was anyone here raised Amish? I was not. No? In the traditional Amish society, major depression is almost unknown. And did you know this is true as well for the equally traditional Kaluli tribe of New Guinea? In both of these societies, individual concerns are group concerns. And group concerns are individual concerns. You see, in both the Amish society and the Kaluli tribe, a person knows if she or he has a problem, other people will help him or her. And vice versa is true. Each person is expected to help out when others need support. Now, unfortunately, humans may know we're meant to do these things, but it's not always a built-in feature of modern society. And why? Well, because these days, people tend to be more self-focused. And the idea of considering the wider community to be more important than the self is almost impossible to stand. understand that for most people. Well, that is, where am I going with this, right? Where is she going? unless you're blessed to be a part of a healthy church family. I finally got there, right? Because today, in this mobile and global economy, we cannot help but witness an ever-increasing pace of life. Does anyone want to deny that? Everyone, I was going to say us over a certain age, but I don't want to get in trouble with parents. Seems like just almost everyone has a smartphone, right? With mounting stresses, awareness of what's happening globally, and responsibilities inherent within that knowledge. I wonder, are these stresses taking their toll? We find ourselves living in a world where we're inundated, or at least I am, with marketing and advertisements, bad news, increased costs, and fragmented communities. Add that just to our day-to-day -day life. And we find that an increasingly unbearable burden is put on our souls, our emotions, and our relationships. Now, as a pastor, I observe a lot of anxious and sad people in our society and churches. Daily, people of all ages and stages of life find themselves walking through what seems to be, and I'm taking this from Psalm 23, a long valley of shadows. And yet, 
Friends, I'm here today to tell you there is good news because no one is alone. We're in this together. We belong. As believers in a church family, did you know we're like the Amish society and the Kaluli tribe? Because Jesus the Christ has taught us not only to love God, but to love who? Love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And did you know that within a church family, God expects that if a person has a problem, other people in the church will help. And the vice versa is true. Each person is expected to help out when others need support. This afternoon, I want you to turn to the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 2, and I want you to highlight it in your Bible. This is what the Apostle Paul wrote. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. It's very clear, believers, people who follow Jesus, are to care for each other. Thanks be to God, we're in this together. We belong in community. Now, unfortunately, we know that feeling blue can sometimes feel like the common cold of our human existence. It can feel like a fever that comes and goes. For some, it stays longer than wished. And for some, feeling blue seems deeper, meaning it contrasts even more when it's compared with those mountaintop experiences of love and peace and joy when our life is nothing but green pastures and still waters and our cup and table are just overflowing. And yet, as the author of Ecclesiastes 3.11 notes, God, the Almighty God, has woven eternity into our very souls. And yet our souls live in an imperfect and painful world. And so what are we to do? So it is in this broken and beautiful in-between place on earth that scriptures, I believe, like Psalm 23, help us. If you're like me, I memorized those six verses as a child during vacation Bible school, not while attending my pastor Papa's church, no, while attending my tobacco farmer Papa's church, my missionary Baptist grandparents' church. And now nearly 60 years later, still to this day, if I waken with a troubling thought through the night, what do you think comes to mind? These words about the good shepherd come to my mind. And this is how I say it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside those still waters. He restores my soul. And when I do that, eventually I feel the peace and grace of God just overflowing within me. And yes, I return to sleep. And even now as a pastor, when I visit someone in the hospital or maybe meet someone for coffee or tea or maybe we're talking over the phone about a difficulty, sometimes I'll share a beloved scripture like this. And doing so between us reminds us of God's promise that when in the midst of our daily lives, especially in suffering and when we feel like we're in crisis, it's Psalm 23 that encourages us to lean in and to trust Almighty God. Because it is God who is leading us, friends. We are not alone. And I think the only possible response to this promise that God is leading us 
is we can either believe it or not believe it. We can either trust it or not trust it. We can choose to live as if God's promise is real and trustworthy, or we can also choose to live as if God's promise is not real and trustworthy. Offering scripture in times of difficulty to believe, trust, and live, it helps us share faithful truths that we can claim and lean on as followers of Jesus. And then let's be honest, we're human, are we not? Anyone here not human? <laughs> I know I'm totally. And so to be honest, there are also times when teachings and truths and words, even Bible verses sometimes, lose their influence. We just can't connect. Because sometimes it feels like the pain and the grief are such that the most powerful thing we can provide someone who is in difficulty and trouble you heard me speak of this so much during our Advent Christmas season, is our presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E. You see, sometimes sharing with people what to believe or how to behave, although it might be well-intentioned, it can be rather misplaced. We've all been there, have we not? Either offering it or receiving it. And I think that's when the best teaching, the most important words, are when you say nothing at all. That's the gift of presence. That's what God, through the gracious gift of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, offers us all, no matter the difficulty, trouble, or despair. I find it interesting to realize that in this most famous of psalms, the Good Shepherd brings such poetic, profound, and compassionate comfort. And did you notice how? With no words spoken. Hmm. The Lord says nothing. However, he makes me lie down. He leads. He is with me. He comforts. He prepares. He anoints. And he dwells with me. Friends, in our troubles, this is a most gracious gift of God that offers us hope and can fill us to overflowing. And so today, if we're one of the fortunate ones this morning who are not wrestling in this moment with or feeling weighed down by depression or anxiety, there's a good chance there's someone in our family or a dear friend who is. As believers, it's important for us to share the truth that God is aware of their suffering, that the Good Shepherd is present right there with those sheep who feel so lost. Yes, church, let's be assured. God is abiding with those who are having a hard time keeping up these days. God is abiding with the ones who are walking through the deep valleys. And as believers in community, I believe the good news is that we too share in this truth of belonging as we love God and we love neighbor as we love ourselves. So this week, friends, let's observe who God places in our path. Let's walk toward the person in need and let's connect you see, beliefs and behaviors rarely heal hearts. However, belonging does. Lord, may it be so. Amen. Our fitting hymn of reflection today is He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. Betsy, I'm going to ask that we sing the first and the last verse. First and last verse of He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. Please stand as able in body or spirit.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we are so thankful to be Easter people. We are so thankful, Lord, that you sent your only begotten Son, our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ, to this earth to show us your intention for how humans are to live, how we're to have a personal relationship with you through Jesus in the power of your Holy Spirit and how we are to care for your creation in all ways. Lord, we must confess this day that although we have Jesus as our example, we do not always follow in the way that Jesus teaches us. And so, Lord, in the silence, we ask you to receive the confession of our sins, we pray, as we humbly ask for forgiveness this day. Lord, thank you for forgiving us and freeing us for joyful obedience, all to your glory. Lord, as the body of Christ here at Calvary United Methodist Church, we pray for the church in every place, universal and individual. Lord, may the body of Christ reign and continue to show your light and love so that those who need to know it most they come to have a personal relationship with you in Jesus the Christ. Especially during this time, Lord, of the 2024 General Conference of the United Methodist Church being held in Charlotte, North Carolina, we pray that you gather us together, Lord, and make us one. Make us one in ministry and mission to the world. And Lord, we pray that your will be done so that there will be one flock and one shepherd. Lord, this day we pray for the nations of the world, for all in conflict and violence, especially, Lord, we uplift Israel and Gaza and Iran and Ukraine. Lord, we know your intention for your created world is of peace and joy and love and grace and mercy and justice 
And that's why you have placed us here in this time as your hands and feet. Lord, anoint us and anoint all leaders with your wisdom that we may use the power you have vested within us to help the poor and to defend the vulnerable. Yes, God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, this day we pray for this community and all communities everywhere. We pray that you would strengthen those who work each day to heal the sick, to welcome the outcasts, and to help sisters and brothers in need. Lord, especially this day, we pray for friends and loved ones. We pray that you would comfort all who are suffering, walk with them through dark valleys, restore them body, mind, and soul, be it physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual needs. Yes, God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you know what each of us need to receive within this worship service today. My prayer is that each of us have gotten out of the way and opened our mind, our heart, our very soul to what you were saying to us, how you were calling us so that we may be your light and love to someone in need and so that we, we may receive the sustenance needed today to inspire others in your created world. Loving God, by the power of your Holy Spirit this day, help us to keep your commandments and to love one another with the love of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For those who are worshiping with us in person, if you have brought your tithes, your gifts, and your offerings... We place those in the black collection box found just outside the sanctuary. If you do not know where that is, ask an usher and they will point you to it. As well as for those who are worshiping online and in person, we may give in other ways, through Venmo, through the church website, and of course, the United States Postal Service, of course. Friends, I want you to know that our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings help to support the missions and ministries of Calvary. And you may wonder, well, what are some of those? How would I know? What am I supporting? Well, I just want to give you a little insight into something that happened just yesterday that I was blessed to be a part of. Our confirmation class went on a field trip to Washington, D.C. And you may say, now, why would you do that in confirmation? Well, did you know that we have two, well, we have many places to choose from, but I chose two of many, we went to the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception, who's been there before? Yes, just near Catholic University. And then not too far down the road, we went to the Franciscan Monastery, who's been there? Oh, let me tell you, friends. I think I've been there oh, over two dozen times, both places. Blessed to take confirmation classes there for years. This helps us understand our heritage that's why sometimes when you'll go to different churches, you'll say, why are they saying some of the same words, not just the Lord's Prayer, but why does the liturgy sound similar? Well, because in the beginning, all were Roman Catholic, yes? And so some of the Methodist liturgy you hear is some of the liturgy within the foundation of the universal Catholic Church. We went to the Franciscan Monastery did you know that there, there are replicas for those of us who may not go to the Holy Land? Who's been to the Holy Land? I have not. Okay, you've probably seen these. The replicas of the birth of Jesus. Yes, you saw that when you went. Uh, the original. For those of us who may not make it, they have replicas of those very sites 
underneath the Franciscan Monastery in Washington, D.C. Yes, friends, that's where our confirmation students went yesterday. That is so close to us. That's just one example of a mission in ministry, of how we're making connections, of what it means to proclaim, I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Friends, my prayer is that you continue to pray for these students who are in the midst of that decision right now. And on May 19th, on Pentecost, may choose to be confirmed here within this sanctuary. Friends, please stand as together we bless our tithes, our gifts, and offerings with our offertory prayer. Gracious provider, we gather with hearts filled with gratitude for the love and light you've shown us. Your word reminds us that true love is seen in the self-sacrifice of Christ. As we offer our gifts and tithes, we are reminded of the importance of generosity and stewardship in every aspect of our lives. May these gifts be a reflection of the love we have experienced in Christ and our commitment to steward them faithfully for the work of your kingdom. Use these offerings to bring justice, mercy, and hope to a world in need. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
So I'm a pastor of homework, which means what we receive of God from within this place, we're to take into the world. And so today our homework, you might have already figured it out, is that we are to consider all the persons that God places in our path this week. And we're to observe the person in need. And we're to connect. And sometimes that may mean no words at all. All to God's glory. Let us bless one another. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.